She was born into polygamy. Her family followed the teachings of Joseph Smith, including plural marriage. Like many young girls, she had been promised to a man who was her father's age. But she ran away. She chose hell over the life of polygamy. That girl was me. I was lost, alone, desolate. Then Jesus Christ found me and rescued me. In his love, I found real freedom. He is a shield to all who will take refuge in him. This is why I can look back and ask, polygamy, what love is this? Welcome again to Polygamy, What Love Is This? I'm Doris Hansen, your host for the program. And the Bible where polygamists claim they get their authority to live polygamy tells us to test everything and then hold fast to the good. And testing everything is what this show is all about. Before we get started, we want you to know that we do help people leave polygamy. You can just call our toll-free number, 877-425-9993, for a private and confidential discussion of your situation, or if you know someone who needs help, and see how we can help you. Uh, you can go to our website, shieldandrefuge.org, for more information about our ministry. You can also contact us about any of our shows, questions, or comments, and if you want it, or if you want to be a guest, by emailing us at email at whatloveisthis.tv. Also, our versions are available on audio. You can download them. Go just go to our website's main page for instructions or soundcloud.com slash whatloveisthis. And also, our shows are available on iTunes podcast. And now, I would like to welcome... Our co-host, Earl Erskine. Thanks, Doris. Appreciate being here again. <laughs> Back again for part, part two, two yes, of, our of this discussion. most fascinating discussion. My goodness. Well, we hope our viewers are finding it as right. interesting as I found it to be when yeah. I first started in on it. Um, last On the last show, we began with the 2005 news story from Turkey where a herd of 1,500 sheep walked off a cliff that had a 45-foot drop to the bottom, and 400 of those sheep were killed, and the bodies of the dead sheep cushioned the fall of the surviving sheep, protecting them from death. First, one sheep walked off the cliff edge, and then each one just followed the other, having no knowledge of the disaster ahead of them. And each one just kept following the others off the cliff until the entire flock was gone. And then we compared that story to the false shepherds of polygamy groups, beginning with yeah. Joseph Smith, who led millions of followers on a deadly journey into eternity without Jesus. And polygamy group leaders are following in Smith's footsteps, and the sheep just keep on following blindly, never stopping to look up, to look out, and check out what their false shepherds are teaching them. And then we focused on Warren Jeff's marriage class, teaching as a great example of how he trains them into faithful, loyal, unquestioning sheep. And if you pay real close attention, you can easily discover the brainwashing techniques that he uses, which are the same <coughs> techniques used by all the Mormon polygamy groups and is based on fake information. Here is an example. After the Civil War, the government turned its hatred against the Mormon people. They put the brethren in jail. When Brigham Young died, an all-out campaign went against John Taylor. And in 1885, John Taylor went into hiding. While in hiding, the year 1886, the Lord and the prophet Joseph appeared to jo John Taylor, stayed with him through the night, and told him that the church was about to apostatize, that a manifesto would be signed by a future president of the church, and that the Lord had to do something to keep this law alive. Wow, this is all fake news. <laughs> if it was on today's news, the fake information couldn't be true. There's a lot of things in there we could talk about, but we don't have time for. But the details that he left out of this is more interesting than what he included. 
Now, the polygamists were jailed because they broke the law. Right. They were lawbreakers. And our country has always been governed by the rule of law. And there's nothing wrong about that. No. And it wasn't Abraham Lincoln who made polygamy illegal. Polygamy was illegal in every time and place where the Mormons practiced it. Many anti-bigamy uh, laws were in place before Joseph Smith ever entered this world. And Mormons settled in uh, polygamous communes in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And each country and every location had laws against polygamy in every place before the Mormons ever got there. So the cat we don't hear that it. story too often, do <laughs> you we? You don't hear that story from them, no. no. Well, Warren Jeffs taught his eternal marriage class uh, that the Lord had to do something, which you quoted in that quote, right. that the Lord had to do something to keep the law of polygamy alive. Now, it was Joseph Smith's law. It wasn't God's law. And I, but I find it difficult to even believe that God is scratching his head trying to figure out a way to keep <laughs> polygamy alive, yeah. especially in view of the fact that God prohibited polygamy in the first place. Well, Jeff's taught that John Taylor called five men in a secret eight-hour meeting and that these five men were placed under covenant to make sure that every year children were born under the plural marriage covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, for our LDS viewers, this is the place that polygamists and the LDS church began to split their allegiances and their doctrine. Was it? This is when the fracture first began and was the beginning of the apostasy of the LDS church yeah. away from the original and binding teachings of Joseph Smith. The polygamists aren't the apostates. We don't think that, but you're <laughs> I right. know. <laughs> the polygamists, not the LDS, hold to basic Mormon dogma of original Mormonism. Now, Warren Jeffs taught his young class that polygamy was rejected when the LDS apostatized. The polygamists had to go into hiding. And in order to stay faithful to God's command of polygamy, they had to live secret lives. And that's what polygamists do today. They live secret and isolated lives. Jeffs taught this. John Woolley was the prophet of the fundamentalists, and he had to keep secret the events of 1886, lest even leaders of the church would try to kill him out of jealousy and wanting the power and right to rule. So the so here the LDS and the polygamists, he's making it sound like they're almost at war with each and other. And this is 1886 before this the church would have been gave up. After eight, this would have been, at John Woolley came around that, around that time frame, but he was... All the Mormon polygamy fundamentalist, fundamentalist groups today have that uh, line right straight back to John Woolley. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. It would be as a result of that 1886 meeting. Wow. It's further back than some people think. Yeah. The polygamists, um, although not based on God's biblical truths, have clung to true Mormonism, which means that they have more history for their beliefs than the LDS Church has for theirs. <laughs> The LDS Church changes with political and contemporary trends, and they've rewritten much of Joseph Smith's history, and they have changed many, many details. And, of course, that provides no solid foundation for their faith. Mm -hmm. Now, Warren Jeffs taught his youth how polygamy has survived and how to keep it alive. Despite the pressures and the desires and temptations of the outside world, they must continue to buckle down and keep the faith. And this is typical of the teachings of all the polygamy groups. Warren Jeffs taught that through God's prophets, the law of polygamy would continue and they would carry it onward into the future. He said that when the FLDS youth are baptized, they unknowingly promise to live all the laws of the priesthood. Now remember, priesthood law is to honor the prophet and live polygamy. It's kind of a key word, isn't it's it? It's one of those key words. Yeah. This is what he said. Yeah. When you were baptized, that was a promise on your part that you would live all the laws of the priesthood, even though you might not have sworn to any oath or words Receiving the blessing was you making that promise. Now, isn't that the kind of cloudy and foggy the way that he... Kind of comes in later and tells them what they really promised. What they really <laughs> promised. So being baptized in the FLDS is not having full understanding of what's going on. They are consenting to live the law of the priesthood and consenting to all the harms that will come upon them if they fail to obey. Mm -hmm. 
They are unknowingly saying yes without saying yes. Je Jeff's taught about their marriage vows when they get married. Now remember, these are youth. These are young minds, not adults. But this is how they condition those young minds to surrender their will to him. He said this. Yeah. In the marriage covenant, you were asked, do you do this of your own free will and choice? Give yourself to your husband. Give yourself to live and abide the celestial law. This is not a work of force. But when you say yes, it is an oath and covenant that cannot be broken without the worst penalties coming upon you. If covenants are broken, the greatest punishments will be given. Now, can you see how the, wow. how this is binding them into yeah. that brainwashing Absolutely. and the fear and the, and the threats? There's always threats. And, of course, they're designed to instill that fear, the obligation, the submission, and guilt. How old would these kids be? Um, the, these would be, well, I'm not sure the age group. It doesn't say on the paper what the age group is. Certainly I just know it's young adults. 13 and 18 or I something. I would guess about between that age. Yeah. Before 18, I would think, sure. but long yeah. before 18. Yeah. Um, and, of course, he said their consent is freely given, but they don't have a choice to say no. No. Uh, but it's actually coerced using threats of penalties and punishment. And their innocent minds are controlled by this kind of teaching over and over and over again from childhood to the grave. And we wonder, how can anyone who enjoys freedom of expression and freedom of choice, how can we ever think that polygamy is just a matter of consenting adults and freedom of religion, that it should be legalized? In Mormon polygamy groups, there is little freedom of choice, especially for the females, now, Warren Jeffs continues with the promise of these magic words, eternal exaltation. <laughs> he quote, he yes, said this. He said this. Marriage is a labor of earning your own exaltation and helping your husband to become exalted, as well as your children. We cannot go to the celestial kingdom alone. A man must have wives. The woman must be married to a man with several wives, and they must live this law properly. Crazy wow. stuff. That really is. This is marriage in a polygamy group. He described it as a labor to achieve exaltation. Love has no part of it. It's not a labor of love, but a labor of helping the man become a god. And as we've shown directly from their teachings, they must live polygamy. And that's precisely what Joseph Smith taught. Really puts the pressure on the women too, doesn't it? Oh I mean, yeah. The girls to, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, you that's must really marry a man to. that's got multiple wives. That that's what he said. And then live it properly. And that's what they're living for. Yeah. And, and that's why we do this show because they have changed God's revealed and simple way of eternal life through Jesus Christ alone. Well, next, Warren Jeffs binds them even closer to obedience to the prophet. Remember, the context of all this is the FLDS marriage covenant. So your covenant is not just with your husband. It is with the prophet and with Heavenly Father, throws that he in. He throws the Heavenly Father in there. Yeah. But here, it's just it's with the husband and the prophet. Uh, that amazes me. That is, is the, the prophets included in this. Now, many times the husband and the prophet might be the same person, but does the prophet share in the marriage covenant of others? Hmm. But that's what it sounds, sounds like, like, doesn't it? it? it he says. said that. Yeah. Despite Jesus' warnings not to take oaths, the religion as a whole requires many promises and covenants. We quote from the Bible. Yeah, this is Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So making all those covenants, <laughs> even in the Mormon church, is wrong, according to what the Bible teaches. Thank you. And ja <laughs> You're welcome. And James <laughs> says this. <laughs> also chapter 5, verse 12. Oh, I can't believe I'm feeling. <laughs> Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no, no, 
or you will be condemned. Okay, so we're not supposed to be able to go around making covenants. God makes covenants, and we enter those covenants, but we don't make those oaths and covenants that bind us uh, into eternity. Isn't that, terrible? that just isn't true. And because Jesus doesn't require or acknowledge Mormonism's covenants and polygamous promises, anyone can walk away from covenants they have made, and God will not send penalty or retribution for walking away. Now, Warren Jeffs taught a law of retribution, which most polygamy groups also teach. I remember being taught it growing up. I learned uh, that false teaching, uh, and, the, and, and it was from the law of retribution that I first learned that God was not nice, <laughs> where I learned to hate him. I wondered how anyone that honorary could even be God. Of course, he was a false God, but Warren Jeffs taught this. And there is also the law of retribution where if you break your covenants, you will go through the punishment of the buffetings of Satan. So God's retribution is the buffetings of Satan. Well, and you say this in your introduction that you actually chose hell, hell as opposed to polygamy. Opposed so you were making polygamy. that choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You thought that's where you were headed. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you were leaving and yet you were so brainwashed that you were still, still under that guilt mm -hmm. of needing to go. I was under a lot of their guilt, a lot of their brainwashing for a lot of years afterwards. Oh, bad. Oh. Yeah. Now, they, they, they think those bi covenants bind the people, and actually they do uh, mentally bind them, but uh, spiritually they're not bound at all because God d doesn't acknowledge those covenants. But what about these buffetings of Satan? They don't teach that God is full of grace and mercy and truth and that he forgives and, and never lets us go when we place our full trust in him. They don't teach that God is patient and that all we need is to trust Jesus alone for eternal life. No, they have to threaten with this vindictive God yeah, who crazy. lives by some law of retribution. Well, now Warren Jeffs begins teaching about secrets and the sacred. <laughs> he said this. When we have the temples, a person will receive their first endowments, being given certain teachings, signs, and tokens. You will be put under an oath to keep them sacred, which means secret. Sacred and secret, interchangeable yeah. words there. Now notice that this is the same temple things that they're doing that the LDS Church that did do. yeah. or does. Yeah. And of course, this is totally from Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith stole the temple rituals from the Masons, which ticked them off. And then they, he said they were from God, and then he adopted them for the Mormon temple rituals. But there's no oath or temple ritual or secrets and tokens and handshakes <laughs> that will ever make anybody worthy of heaven or let them into heaven's gates. Then Warren Jeffs talks about the second endowment for those who prove faithful. The Lord, by revelation, will speak through the prophet and say, This man and certain wives who are one with him, they are worthy of the second endowments. They are sealed as kings and priests, queens and priestesses, unto the Most High. These ordinances are necessary for us to become like God. So here again, wow. they've got all those dogmatism going yeah. on that's totally unbiblical. Uh, another promise that living polygamy makes them w worthy to receive eternal rituals that will help them become gods. And, and, and we hope that you're noticing as we go through these, that there's, there's always that frequent reference to the prophet, the prophet, how important it is to listen and obey the prophet. Of course, that's himself. <laughs> but I'd rather look to Jesus. Yeah, and that's what Hebrews 12, 2 says. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. It's Jesus yeah, who's the founder yeah. of our Christian faith and the perfecter of it. And he doesn't need our help or polygamy to accomplish his purposes. He died on the cross so that humans could enter into that faith and enter into the covenant he made to save us. It's his covenant, not ours. And those who try to earn it are disqualified. We look only to Jesus because no one else is the founder and perfecter of our faith. And you know what? There's only one faith. Yeah, we read this all the time. Ephesians 4, 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one <laughs> wow. faith, one baptism. Yeah. And it's all contained in the Bible. It isn't Mormonism. It isn't polygamy. 
it's Jesus. And as most of our viewers know, an important reason that we do our program is to stir people up <laughs> to search out God's truths for themselves. If you really want his truth and you're willing to accept it and follow it, God will show it to you. Now, Warren Jeff's teachings the, of the females continues like this. So I ask you ladies, what do you want? Celestial and plural marriage is for self-exaltation as well as glorifying God and His work and exalting others. It is a continuation of the works of Heavenly Father. This law has been lived by all of the gods who have ever been exalted. And every earth that has been created where children could come and receive bodies, the gods over that earth lived this law. That is called eternal progress to receive this law and abide it. Notice how many times he uses the word law, yeah. law, law, law. And it's right. the law of polygamy, which is the priesthood. And gods and all the gods before them were involved in this fake law. Sounds and so it's glorious. And so huh? corrupted. <laughs> oh. yeah. The false shepherd leading the sheep over the cliff rather than following Jesus, the great shepherd who saves us from the danger of the cliff. The truth in Jesus is so simple, so free of complications and free of so many do's and don'ts and phony laws. That man can become gods or even like God is a satanic lie spoken by the serpent in the Garden of Eden when he promised Adam and Eve that they would become like God if they would just disobey God. <laughs> and of course... That's, that's kind of backwards. Uh, it is backwards. You it, think about well, it. Well, just do evil so that good can come he's, is what he's saying. But Jesus said that the devil's a liar and can't tell the truth. It's impossible for him to tell the truth. So everything... The serpent said to Adam and Eve was a lie. It's a lie that you can become a god or like God. Now, Jer Warren Jeffs wraps up his teaching on celestial marriage, FLDS style. <laughs> when you enter into this law and are sealed to a man, always seems like he's talking to the women. But yes. When, he enters into, <laughs> when you enter into this law and are sealed to a man, you are going to have to give up a, to a great degree of your going to have to give up a great degree of your girlhood associations. Give yourself to your husband and confide in him. This law is the most sacred holy law given from God to man, and your relation, relation with your husband is sacred. Your private relations are sacred. The private teachings he gives you are sacred. You must keep sacred things secret in order to keep them sacred. The only things that will last are the sealings of the holy priesthood, and you must keep sacred your relationship. It sounds like he's setting them up for some secret things going on yeah, in the marriage absolutely. bed, and we found out later that there was a lot of secret things where they would initiate, many of his wives would get together to initiate new wives oh, into really? the sexual act, and, and just a lot of ugliness going on there. They they found tapes of some of those things when they oh, raided right. El Dorado And that's uh, what temple. got him in prison, too, I think, yeah, some of that the, stuff. The, mm -hmm, that was a, a lot of real good information. But notice also he taught the ice isolationalism. Yeah. Uh, when they got married, they could have no more girlfriends, no more confidants, just your husband, and lots and lots of sacred secrets. Uh, polygamy groups could not survive, of course, without the teaching of the sacredness of their secrets. Now, these are all rules and controlling techniques used by false shepherds, techniques that God never uses. In fact, as the good shepherd, he gives himself to us rather than demanding that we give ourselves for him, we quote. Yeah, this puts a new perspective on this uh, scripture, John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Isn't that great? <laughs> Polygamy groups demand the members give their all to the group, to the prophet, but the difference is Jesus gave his all for his sheep. As the great shepherd, Jesus doesn't lay heavy burdens on us. As someone said, he is not a burden giver. He's a burden taker. If you'll entrust yourself to him rather than to the false shepherds, you'll discover the peaceful green pastures with quiet waters as described in Psalm 23. And finally, I read a conversation that was po posted on the internet between a woman's Mormon mother and her Mormon grandmother as they were talking about the FLDS polygamous. Their discussion was with two female Mormon missionaries, and part of their conversation went like this. So these are all Mormons, right? So I'm sitting in a room right now with my mother, grandmother, and two sister missionaries. We got on the topic of the FLDS and how they operate. 
Here are some of the best parts. Mother. Oh, it's sad how misguided they are. Grandma. Indoctrination is a cult, and they don't know any better. Mother. It's so sad how the children are born into it and forced to stay. Mother says again, everything they do just seems a little different. The whole time I was thinking how outsiders think the exact same things about the Mormons. How can they openly ridicule the polygamists without seeing the connection between us? And the connection <laughs> is there. Too many LDS look at polygamists with the attitude of pity or scorn or deep curiosity. But if they are generational Mormons, that's how their ancestors lived. And if they're not generational Mormons but converts, they need to take a deep look into unsanitized Mormon history because Joseph Smith is the very person Mormonism is structured upon and today's polygamists are following in Smith's footsteps as faithfully as any religious leader could ever ask for. Unfortunately, the polygamists along with the LDS who embraced Joseph Smith as a prophet are just following him right over the edge of the cliff. Interesting. One thing I, want, I had asked you earlier was about persecution and you know, we, you were, we were talking about that and, and how that plays into the life of a polygamist and how they feel they're persecuted. It's a, it's a big part, uh, at least it was when I was growing up, and I assume it still is in the polygamous families, uh, that everything, uh, what the secrets, they have to be secret because of persecution. Of course, polygamy is illegal, so they have to live right. polygamy because uh, because it's illegal. And, and they sometimes don't even know who their father is, or many they can't times. take the name well, of the father. <clears throat> in the Kingston group, they didn't and don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the FLDS, sometimes they do, so it depends on the group, on uh, on their policy with that. But if if they knew who our father was, then they could prove he was a polygamist. No, you know, if, 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 if our Different family used and, his name, right. then then they could prove he was a polygamist because he was having babies with this woman and this woman at the same time. And so obviously that makes him a polygamist. Wow. It is such a brainwashing and they just stick with it. Isn't it sad that they go over the cliff with everything. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and politically, it's just getting more and more accepted. Even though they pass laws against it, it's not making any difference politically. And the media, they're not helping a bit either. Yeah. Well, that completes our two-part series on the FLDS Marriage Covenant. Thank you again. Yes, my pleasure. Uh, in the last two shows, we presented God as the Good Shepherd, contrasted with the cruelty of the leaders of Mormon polygamy groups. But many times in the Old Testament, God spoke to His people with words of love. For instance, in Hosea 11:4, He said, I led them with cords of human kindness, with the ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. God ministers to us with love and kindness. He lifts our burdens. He doesn't place them on us. Those who grow up in polygamy groups learn of a God who demands a heavy burden and life in a loveless marriage. Well, we urge our polygamous viewers to take some prime time and open the Bible and study God's love and kindness and discover that God doesn't want polygamy from you. All he wants is your love and your complete trust. Thank you for watching.